Welcome to Wake Up Calls. This is Todd Goodwin. My wife Gina and I are board certified hypnotists with years of experience empowering people to enjoy healthier and more fulfilling lives. There's a myth that hypnotists put people to sleep, but the truth is that we wake them up. So many people sleepwalk through life with no clue what causes their emotions and behaviors. They feel like helpless victims of their anxieties, bad habits, and traumas. Fortunately, we've helped thousands of clients to unlearn those issues, often quickly and easily. What if you could know yourself, accept yourself, and value yourself more than ever before? How would that improve every part of your life? It's possible, and it starts now with self-awareness. Our mission is to help you to wake up so you can think better, feel better, and do better. Podcast topics range from health and wellness to relationships to human behavior and psychology. Our conversations are always informative, often controversial, and sometimes entertaining. Get ready. It's time to wake up. Good day. Good day. Good day. I have a question. Yes, you do, darling. Yes. Will I have an answer, perhaps? I'm wondering if you would answer (laughs) Julio's question. Ah, yes. He's from Nuevo Mexico. Ah, New New Mexico. Mexico, Our neighbor, yes. So Julio from New Mexico, he says, let's see here. He says he's having panic attacks. I can't breathe. They come on suddenly. I've been in the ER thinking I was having a heart attack. Wow. What can I do when I feel another panic attack coming on? You and I have both seen people, uh, many people over the years who have have panic attacks and those kind of issues. And I think a lot of people who have had panic attacks have gone to the emergency room thinking they're having a heart attack. And it's really interesting because... I've seen people like that too, yeah. And, and have in your case, were they young? Because most of the people I've seen under fifty. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, for if, sure. I guess if you're in your probably forties and under. Yeah, for sure. Because if you're in your twenties, it's extremely unlikely you're having a heart attack, and <laughs> yeah. yet people seem to think they're having a heart attack. I, I just want to say this comes back to part of our mission, which is to help you wake, wake up. up and open your <laughs> eyes and realize what's going on between your ears has a huge effect on your, on body. your body. And exactly so. Just because you have heart palpitations, shortness of breath, pounding in your chest, sweats, all those things, which, you know, if you're at risk for a heart attack, then it could be a heart attack, but it could also just be a panic attack. Or low blood sugar. Or, yeah, there's a lot of different <laughs> physical things <laughs> that can we're cause talking that. about the, um, severe yeah. anxiety. Yeah, so, okay, so, so Julio is asking, you know, what can I do? Let me see that. He says, what can, what I, can I do when I feel it? another one yeah. coming on? Let's take a step back. Panic attacks can can come from a few different possible causes, but when we're talking about the emotionally driven panic attack, because sometimes it can be physiological, but usually it's emotional, and that means that panic attack is basically a runaway adrenaline response, a stress response to a form of either acute or ongoing anxiety or, or nervousness or uneasiness. So in other words, there's a tipping point where they go from being moderately stressed or anxious to extremely stressed or anxious. Whatever the outside or inside stimulus, meaning it could be suddenly, if let's just say they have a fear of a plane crashing and they got on an airplane and sometimes they can handle it, but this time they start freaking out. Um, Actually, freaking out is is a (laughs) phrase people use for a panic attack. You know, feeling like loss of control. I can't control my mind. I can't control my body. I, feeling of doom. Exactly. And your mind goes goes really off the deep end sometimes. Uh, so it can be externally triggered, but usually the cause is internal, meaning your mind. If someone has a panic attack, there's anxiety or stress that goes really intensely based on what they're thinking, and that causes an emotional surge of that feeling. And what happens there is that that causes a release of stress hormones. And what happens is if you have too much adrenaline 
that can cause all these physiological reactions, the heart, the shortness of breath, all these different things, cold sweats, dizziness, lightheadedness. And so a panic attack is basically just a runaway adrenaline response or stress reaction. And then the problem, which creates a vicious cycle, is that when people start feeling that they're having another panic attack, or if they don't know it's a panic attack, they start, they're like, oh my God, what's wrong with me? Something's happening. And then they, they start, start freaking out even more. Right, exactly. So Because now they know something's wrong and they're in that heightened state and they just, everything's just exponentially worse, but it's all in their mind. Usually it is. Usually. If so, it's not chemically related or anything like that. You exactly. Know, caffeine or low blood sugar or things like that. Right. So, I, you know, it, I can't give, give an easy answer to what do I do when one is coming on. Because remember, our approach as hypnotists is not to merely cope with your problems, but to actually resolve them at the root. Panic attacks are a symptom. They're a mm -hmm. symptom. I'm simplifying here, but they're a symptom of anxiety. And there is and, and anxiety is a symptom or a result of certain thought patterns fear or beliefs, based. exactly fear-based thinking, and conditioning of the nervous system. So if someone has created a routine based on a habitual thought pattern of becoming anxious or stressed out, and it becomes too intense, they can have a panic attack. But what the important thing to realize is this is a habit. It's a mental habit that creates an emotional habit that creates a neurological or nervous system habit. So the body mind together creates this whole cascade that leads to panic attacks. But this is a habit. So the, the way to resolve it is not coping with it when it comes on. It's changing the, it's figuring out what is the mindset or belief system or perception or thought that causes the anxiety or stress, which when it gets to elevate it causes the panic attack and and to change that underlying thought process or belief system and recondition the nervous system to be calmer. I had a client once who, and this is a really interesting root cause of a panic attack. It's just, it was kind of cute. <laughs> it was endearing. Okay. Um, she had a huge, 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 bigger than I used to have, phobia of spiders. Mm. And she was driving on the freeway in Miami on I-95, a.k.a. the death trap. Oh, I remember this. Someone dies like every day on I-95 almost. Wow. It's so terrible. Or they get, there's an accident every day. At least there's an accident every oh, single sure. day. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every single day. Um, so she was on I-95 and she had her kids in the car. And she saw a spider crawling near her windshield. And she freaked out on the highway and she had to pull over and she was just freaking out. She ran out of her car and her kids are like seeing their mother in this panic state, acting ridiculous, mm -hmm. had to almost cause an accident, could have killed everybody and more and then some. And it's just like, wow, if she'd only resolved her phobia of spiders, she wouldn't have had this crazy out of nowhere panic attack on the freeway she with her children her, in the car. Her car. Yeah. But she and, got and over she it. was laughing about it, and she and she she knew it was ridiculous. But you helped her over it, right? Yeah, right. So you can laugh at it when it's done. <laughs> no, but this is a serious problem. I just I remembered right now uh, a client who had panic attacks, and a lot of a lot of phobias, a lot of panic attacks, and anxiety in general originate from or have their origin related to some kind of emotional trauma or traumatic event, and very often we're not even aware of what the that, that we even have the trauma. And this is why it's so important because so much of anxiety and these kind of issues come from traumatic experiences. Mm -hmm. And trauma, folks, can be easily fixed. Don't believe when they tell you you just have to cope with it. If you have post-traumatic stress, you're going to have to just deal with it. That's absolute bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so I was saying that you don't need to cope with trauma, you don't need to cope with panic attacks. You can fix them, resolve them, make them go away, but not by trimming weeds. You need to pull the weeds up by the roots. So, my client story. Yes. So this client, she came to me knowing she had had a traumatic experience and the symptom from that point on was panic attacks. Her issue was she was coming home one day or one night, 
and she was walking up to the front door of her house with keys in her hand and some guy jumped out of the bushes and held a gun to her head and to steal her purse. You know, obviously she was massively startled and, and traumatized by that experience. She wasn't physically harmed, but when I met her, she said that since it had happened nine months earlier or so, she had not been able to go to her house alone at night uh, at all. Anytime she would even approach the uh, her house, she would start having getting extremely nervous, start having a panic attack. Uh, in fact, she couldn't even go to her house even during the day without feeling nervous. But at night, it was much worse. When we resolved the trauma, changed her memory uh, so that it was no longer scary to her, then it was done. And uh, she told me that she went home, she went to, had the keys in her hand, she remembered what happened, but she wasn't nervous. That's amazing. And it, you, but that's it. It is amazing. That's, it's, those are fairly typical in terms of the results because if you can identify the origin of the trauma and you can change the perception of it, then the anxiety which comes from that, the belief system surrounding that trauma, like I'm not safe outside of my home. Someone's going to hurt me. Uh, you know, someone could kill me. Attack me. Right. So she had that belief playing in her head and her mind was doing that to protect her. The problem was that's highly unlikely to happen again. So we needed to change her perception and the panic attacks went away. So my, my purpose in telling that story, just like, you know, when you were telling mm -hmm. yours, Gina, is that panic attacks are a symptom. And when you deal with what is causing that, then they go away. Mm-hmm. You might be thinking, well, okay, I've been to therapy for months or years. I really understand right. why I have panic attacks, but I still have them. And I've had clients who have said this or, too. Or they've done yoga or self-help books or been to a, a psychic <laughs> or... <laughs> you know. Or sure, to like an empowerment workshop or right. stuff. So the problem with... These are all fine. The only problem with that is that all of those methods or, or modalities work at the conscious level and the source of emotional challenges like stress and anxiety, panic attacks, trauma, all of these things are at the subconscious level. The subconscious, if you don't know, is your irrational, emotional, habitual, gratification. instant gratification, right, and self-preservation part of your mind. It is much more powerful than your logical, rational, long-term thinking conscious mind. So your conscious mind may know I know I'm safe in this situation. Like, I know this plane is not going to crash. I know the spider's not going to kill me. Exactly. Um, actually, but... I just remember I had a client who had a who was driving down the highway, and she had a, a phobia of spiders. And Another a, one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just remember it. The, the spider, she was driving. And oh, it, and it came out of the air conditioner? It, it shot out of the air vent because the <laughs> air conditioning was on, so it blew the spider on. Oh, my her. God, I would have died if she, I were me in the past. She almost... Uh, she almost... Um, Got in a wreck? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh that, that, that was... I mean, yeah, no, she really... That could create a phobia even if you weren't scared to begin with. For sure. I mean, I had another client who developed panic attacks because uh, where he was afraid to drive on highways. And actually, it wasn't... What's interesting is that for him, he had no apparent trauma. And his the first time this showed up, he didn't have any obvious anxiety. But what was interesting, and this is probably rare... But I asked him some questions. Did you, were you taking any new medications? Were you, you know, did you have any other issues going on? It turned out he had just started taking an allergy medication. And apparently one of the side effects can be racing, uh, you know, heart rate and all of that. He was new he to the medication. He didn't know that. Anyway, he was driving on a highway and he all of a sudden started feeling this, these physiological signs of, anxiety high stress even yeah. though even though mentally he was calm but unfortunately like we mentioned before as soon as he noticed oh okay. my god what's going on what's happening to me oh my god i must be freaking out something bad's gonna happen and he starts getting really nervous it was chemically induced it was chemically induced and yet from that point on his mind his subconscious mind had linked being really terrified because he didn't know what the hell was going on with being on a highway so you know he couldn't he stopped he pulled over he calmed down. As soon as he got back in his car to start driving, it started happening again. He had to get his wife to come and pick him up in a tow, a tow truck to get the car. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so really, On South Beach. Yeah, well, 
But all these situations go to point out that there can be various causes. Well, that was an easy way to get to his root cause. Right. But but we didn't solve it by come, by telling him to get off the medication. That's up to him and his physician because the medication is not really the problem. That was just how he learned to be afraid. So really what we do as hypnotists is to retrain or re-quote program your mental computer, your subconscious mind, which has acquired certain limiting beliefs or disempowering uh, information through life. And we basically use hypnosis and neuro-linguistic programming or NLP to change the subconscious information. And once that changes, and you can't do it just by getting a pep talk or using affirmations or going to psychotherapy, you need to work with a qualified, experienced hypnotist who knows how to help you shift that. And once that shift has taken place at the subconscious, the emotional and behavioral responses change very quickly, often immediately. That's all I got, Gina. I'm done for today. <laughs> you have anything else? No. See you next time. And remember to wake up. Wake up. Open those eyes. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please share it with others who might benefit too. Follow our podcast at www.goodwinwakeupcalls.com to be notified as new episodes are released. If you have questions or topics you'd like us to address, email wakeupcalls at goodwinhypnosis.com. And visit goodwinhypnosis.com if you'd like our help to overcome a personal challenge. We'll talk to you soon.